But I would love to see Otley and the skipper, Shy Hope, at the top. Kathy, Athenes, Hodge, and the all rungs is going down like Rust and Trace. Hey there, Kicker Lovers. Welcome back to another episode here on the Reverse Group channel, your one-stop destination for all things cricket. I'm your host, Nabil Khan, and as always, we've got an exciting video for you. We're covering the Australia versus West Indies ODI series preview. Again, I will be joined with my buddy, Mr. Mark Audain, to do this analysis. So if you're as pumped as we are about this thrilling series, then stick around because we're about to break down the key matchup, analyze the players to watch, and provide you with everything you need to know for the first ball. Mark, how are you doing, brother welcome on board are you ready to dissect this odi series and give our viewers a top-notch analysis here man good night nabil thanks for having me back on the reverse scoop yes very excited west indies is going to do well in the one day series in australia looking forward for some great performances from the up-and-coming stars players like teddy bishop hopefully he could come to the core and, and, and do well matthew ford the new all-rounder let's hope he can play well in australia as well Expect good things from Katie Carty, more consistency from Katie Carty. Kareem Hodge, looking forward for good things from Hodge again. And the most exciting all-rounder on this tour to me, Romario Shepard. If he gets it right with the ball, and we know he spends 30 minutes at the crease, it's curtains for Australia. Agree, man. I mean, that England series, right? The last ODI series they played him. Mean, he had a good role in those games. We're, we're, we want to obviously see him develop into a world-class all-rounder and see more consistent performances from Romario Shepard. And I think with him, we had another all-rounder, the West Indian side. You know, to have Justin Greaves as well and a, and a Kevin Hodge, Rostin Chase, you know, comes back into the lineup. So they're kind of filling up their ODI side with, you know, different types of all-rounders, right? So they can find find that balance. What's the first potential lineup looking like, Mark? Do you see the same team to start with that won that last England series against, you know, England, obviously, in, in the Caribbean? Well, you don't want to change a, a winning team. You want to start with, with a winning team. Once it's successful, you don't want to change a, a winning formula. They would have to bring in a, a couple of changes, but I see them starting the same lineup um, with a skipper leading from the front. Shy Hope is in good form, and I'm expecting him to continue his fine batting form and leading from the front in the series. I would really love to see Justin Grave come into his own in the one days. Katie Carty, I'd really love to see Katie Carty bat long and show some good consistency because he has all the potential. He's a very good batsman, has all the skills, good temperament, all the shots. So hoping to see Katie Carty emerge in the series as, as a good player as well. Big time. Do you see Teddy Bishop or Kijarn Otley coming into the opening slot, you know, in, in, in the first couple of games in the ODI series? I think the starting is probably where they can take a chance in the first match, you know, where if they want to give a, a chance to somebody, they can perhaps bring in an opener to test. Do you see any of these guys, uh, maybe Teddy Bishop or Kijarn Otley coming into, into the lineup to open the innings? Otley would get the nod because uh, he's an open batsman by trade. He bats for Trinidad at the top of the order. Alec Atenes, on the other hand, in the ODIs or listed bats for Wimbledon Islands at the top of the order as well. So it's just a, a matter of preference from the captain. But I would love to see Otley and the skipper Shy Hope at the top. Kathy, Atenes, Hodge, and the all rounds is going down like Rust and Trace, Justin Graves. Matty Ford and the other fast bowlers. I would love to see O'Shane Thomas in the, in the lineup as well because he has an extra pace to go with a um, Matty Ford line and length stop bowling style. Yeah. So so it's it's a good lineup for for the ODI team. Yeah. It just means a lot of these guys are inexperienced as, as well and finding their way. What? They would have to come up with some good performances and don't forget yeah. Morty the spinner as well. I would play Morty over Hayden Walsh because Morty has more control, a more line and length variations, better bowler in this format to me than the leg spinner the back of the arm leg spinner yeah it can bring you know more control as you said and it can bring he can ball economical spells right keep one control and tied a little bit maybe go at you know four and a half five and over what where when the other guys can go on the attack and and look for wickets so i think moti definitely gets in there but you know one guy guy you didn't mention i think is romario shepherd um, you know where does he fit in into the all-rounders i know there's matthew ford there's rostin chase you know justin greaves kevin hodge so there's a bunch of all-rounders in this lineup right so one of them will have to obviously miss out 
So would, do we, do we go with a Romario Shepard, I think, over a guy like Justin Greaves, perhaps? Or do you play both of them together? Yes, I, I would go with Romario Shepard over Justin Greaves for the first match. Um, have Justin, Dre, um, Justin Greaves on the bench, just in case, you know, you could have him to play in the later matches. But Shepard, once he gets his bowling right, the only problem, as I say, I'm worried about Romero Shepard. He goes for eight runs over as a as a first class, as a, as a first class preference choice bowler. But his batting is devastating. Hitting low down the order, seven, eight, nine. You know, it's match winning stuff from him. So, but I, I'm, I think they're going to lead with going through with Shepard over Justin Graves. Justin Graves as the as the backup all rounder. Yeah, I, I, I think yeah, absolutely they have to. I think Jamari Shepard in the white ball format is pre- superior all rounder to Justin Graves at this point, in my opinion. But you know, Justin Graves obviously also needs to be given some chances. He he, he got a you know a chance to do something in Test cricket. Well. But definitely just needs more time with the team to to, to develop further uh, under better players, in my opinion. I think nothing against Greaves, but obviously Shepard comes into this lineup for us uh, far in this ODI lineup. And you said, oh, Shane Thomas, you want to see come into the lineup, um, you know, brings a bit of pace and, and fire as well. One name we don't see on this ODI team, Mark, is Shamar Joseph, the star that just kind of won the Australian series, which I'm kind of surprised with. I know they probably announced the squad prior to you know him doing all these performances but do you think it makes sense would it made sense to get shamar into this odi setup as as soon as possible just so he could stay with the team and spend more time because i know he went back to guyana not in australia for this series well he had he has an injury he just uh, acquired an injury in the in the second test match so it wouldn't really make sense to have him around you know on his feet when he can go back home and and have get some treatment and rest in guyana and then yeah. be, ready, be ready for the maybe the west indies first class season maybe the, the from the third rung or fourth rung wrong yeah. and if you want to give him a shot for the world cup as a wild card for the t20 world cup i mean that's a possibility but i think it's a good choice just to send him home and get some rest yeah. i mean he worked hard he, he really give 150 percent with the ball you know so he, he he needs that deserved rest another chance for another bowler to step up to assist alzari joseph because alzari joseph to me is a leader of the attack in the in the one day squad even if he might open the bowling, but he's just genuine make a taker. If you look at West Indies stats yeah. over the past two years in, in the ODI, Aljari Zover has been taking a lot of wickets in all formats of the game. With Aljari Joseph, Thomas with some fire, Matthew Ford and Romario Shepard to assist. You also have Gudukesh Moody, Kavim Haj, bowls a bit of left arm spin as well. You know, there's a lot of variety there and a lot of options. So we could see Rust and Trace mightn't get a look in, in the first couple of matches as well. Yeah, I think it's going to be a powerful lineup, uh, you know, for the Windies. And and they may, you know, they have a lot of players that can bat the 50 overs. Who are some, you know, uh, power hitters? You already mentioned Romario Shepard is one. But I don't see guys from the T20 setup, especially the power hitters that, you know, play in, in the T20s, the T20 captain, Robin Powell, a couple other guys that are in there consistently, but you don't get to see them in the ODI lineup. You think that's a, a miss, perhaps, Mark? You know, because ODI obviously requires upping the game and the ante in the last 10 overs last 15 overs and we've seen guys like david miller and other you know players who come out and close the games in the odi innings from the number six and number seven spot who do you see filling that role for west indies in the squad because i don't see a robin powell or or, or a power hitter of that sorts in this uh squad yet you gotta remember the captain shy hope he, he bats deep in the innings most of the time right he could always up the yeah. ante and up the tempo once he's batting up to the 40th over 45th over shepherd you just need shepherd to come in and bat five overs and with five overs you'll get 40 lusty runs from him odi format is a, yeah. is a longer format the batsmen don't really need to bat out a character play big shots most of these batsmen in the team are conventional batsmen who play good cricket in strokes yeah. you know plays the ball and merit it's just a matter of uh, rotating rotation of the strike up in the ante scoring quickly when it's required but as i say we have uh, just a, that lusty kind of hitting from shepherd i don't think we have a, have to really worry too much all the other batsmen a good batsman could really up the strike rate and my only problem with the odi batting most of the times is the rotation of the strike too much of dot balls you know so if you could always rotate the strike and don't you know get runs from the, those good balls you know when i see west indies batting 50 overs and scoring 350 runs that's par for these days in odi cricket right even if you look at the world cup in india last year there were scores you know hitting 400 even right so 
It's I think that's the this the new 350 is like how it was 300 back in the day, right? It's literally jumped up to a sense where you're now required to score 350 and that's par. Teams can easily chase 350 down these days. So even with a 350 on the board, the game is never kind of safe, you know, especially on a good batting surface and playing Australia as well. So I don't think it's going to be an easy task for these guys. They ha- they would have to score an access of 300 runs to to win this game, uh to, th- to win these games I think for for West Indies. I think they again have the bowling attack, but will they be able to put up the put up the big runs against the Aussies? Mark, what do you think? Do you think they'll put up the runs? And what, what prediction line are you seeing for this series? Yes, they will be able to put up the runs. Right now, as I said, the team is high in confidence, right? Some of these lads in the ODI setup, like Atomaze, Hodge, yeah. would want to prove themselves. They would want to be among the runs, big runs in Australia series. Katy would, would love to make a name for himself as well. The, skip, the skipper, Shai Hope, is in good form. Kijan Otney would, would love to be in the West Indies for a long period of time, so he would want to do well as well. I see West Indies putting up over 300 runs in most of these matches. If West Indies is chasing and Australia give West Indies 340, I'm looking for West Indies to win because, as I say, West Indies could be very dangerous when they are trying to chase a high total. And these guys, as I say, have something to prove. I mean, they're confident. I mean, they're they're in a high right now from winning England in the Caribbean. So they would love to come to Australia and, and put up a very good performance and make our Caribbean people proud. Yeah, absolutely, man. And I think like the last five matches, if we look at recent performances from Australia and West Indies, Australia's coming winning their last five ODIs on the trot. In the last five, West Indies have won three and lost two. West Indies, again, is on, you know, high on confidence coming up against that test win. It's going to really boost them to, you know, compete punch for punch against Australia in this series. Let's also talk a little bit about the Australian lineup, Mark. We have, you know, I'm going to just name off the squad here. Australian squad for this ODI series. Steve Smith, Sean Abbott, Xavier Bartlett, Jake Fraser, McKirk, Cameron Green, Aaron Hardy, Travis Head, Josh Inglis, Marnus Labuschagne, Lance Morris, Matthew Short, Will Sutherland, Adam Zampa. So that rounds out their squad, which again looks like a new look squad. There's some new names in there. Lance Morris. We see we see Jake Fraser, McKirk, Xavier Bartlett. So some of these names, you know, Will Sutherland, uh, an all rounder. So we see some new names in here. Uh, Matthew Short as well, who's a performer in the BBL, gets a go in the series. So a lot of new names you know in this australian squad how do you how do you see the outlook for this australian lineup mark because again there's some new names here so i'm not sure what their potential lineup could be for this coming odi match that that's why i said in the earlier it would be an even contest because this is a new look australia team and a new look west indies team both players and and both sides are trying to make name for themselves australia have the home advantage because they're playing in Australia, they understand the conditions much more than the West Indies. But I expect West Indies to come out on top and, and play some excellent cricket. The, the Aussies I'm not too familiar with because I haven't really watched the big batch this season. As I say, I really like 2020 cricket, so I really pay attention, much attention to it. Lance Morris, I know, is a good prospect. With Sutherland, I know, is a, is a good cricketer as well. I expect Sean Abbott to do well, good all-rounder. Bowls excellent line and length, mix up, have very good variations, bats well as well. So I expect Sean Abba to be one of the standout players for Australia. Bartlett is a guy under up under up. Expect good things from Bartlett as well. But Lance Morris is, is really the talk of the town for me for, for Australia. I'm looking forward to see Lance Morris play against West Indies. Most of these Australian players, they're well experienced. They've been playing cricket. Even they may they be very young, they've been playing good standard of cricket for a long time. So this is an opportunity for them to make a name for themselves to be the next up and coming generation of Aussie cricketers. Absolutely, man. And you heard from our guys, Lance Morris is a guy to watch out for. Very promising, you know, cricketer with Will Sutherland and sure Jake Fraser McCurk is a batter that I'm looking forward to seeing as well. So I think it's going to be a great series. And one thing, Mark, you know, that's obviously new is the captain, right? We see Steve Smith take on the leadership role. I don't know after how long, after a long time, but he will be captaining this ODI series. I think they've given a rest to Pat Cummins, Mitchell Stark, Hazelwood. All these guys are just relaxing. Mitchell Marsh, we don't see in this lineup. We're seeing a lot of their top players get the well-deserved rest, you know, after a long season. Steve Smith, man, coming back into the leadership fray and leading the SODI team. What are you, some thoughts there? Australia always believe in Steve Smith's leadership qualities, uh, you know, minus the 
the sandpaper debacle back in, in South Africa. He did a reasonable job. Steve Smith has, is a good character, you know, a, a real fighter. You know, all he knows about is, is cricket, you know, and wants to do well. So I think he would he would show some good leadership quality. As he was captain in the team well before all that mess incident happened in, in South Africa. It's nothing new to him. I would just expect um, to see him leading from the front, as I say, he's a hungry, hungry guy. Expect him this time to score some runs in, in the one day as well and lead from the front. When he has responsibilities, he seems to be a much better player and always performs. Yeah, big time. I think, you know, with this leadership on, on him, I think he's probably going to be a player to watch out for in this series and in this lineup. You know, they, they he's been he's been a sort of out of form, but that last inning, 91 not out, I'm sure is going to hold him in good stead in, in scoring some runs for this Australian ODI team. And even a guy like Marnus Labouchain, who's been out of sorts of form, you know, needs, needs some time to get some time on the crease and score runs because I think he's a bit of under pressure as well. But two players, Mark, one from each side to highlight as the star for this coming ODI series. Who do you see kind of outperforming and, and being your player on of, of this series? Let's make some predictions to end this off and then we'll bring we'll, we'll overview that in the post-match. For Australia, Sean Abbott and for West Indies, the skipper Shai Ho. Those are my two choices. Awesome, man. Awesome. I'll, I'll go with I'll go with the Steve Smith first Australia, Zari Joseph for the Windies, the vice captain of that attack team. So I think, you know, that's all it is. We have, Mark, do you have anything else to discuss for this particular preview? No, just looking forward for the first match. After then, we could make our predictions and, 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 and see how it goes from there. Sounds good, Mark. Again, thank you, brother, for joining me. It was a wonderful preview for this ODI series. Guys, again, if you're just joining us, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell icon for more updates. And let us know in the comments what you guys think it's going to happen in this ODI series. Will West Indies be able to pull off an ODI series victory in Australia? We're all looking forward to this match coming up on Thursday. So again, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe so you can get continuous updates and um, also follow us on Twitter, guys. That's where we do our daily quick updates. So Twitter and our Facebook groups, I'll link them in the description. That's where you guys can you know follow along with everything that's happening in the cricket world. So again, guys, thank you for watching. Nabil Khan and Mark Audhain from the Reverse Scoop signing off. Have a great night, everybody.